Australia is labelled as largely flat. Mountains of significant size are really only found in present day upon the eastern side of the continent within the Great Dividing Range, which is gigantic in its own right. But amazingly, the most famous landmark of Australia, Uluru, the gorgeous rust-coloured monolithic rock located near Alice Springs, actually owes its existence from the erosion and subsequent deposition that occurred from a once massive mountain range that was literally as large as the Himalayan mountains and was located right in the middle of Australia in an area that is little more than an outback desert in present day. The Peterman Ranges were a colossal sized mountain situated where Uluru is in present day. It was formed between 600 to 550 million years ago when Australia was a very different place. Australia hasn't always looked the way it does in present day. It was actually formed piece by piece as large chunks of continental crust crashed into one another throughout time. At this point in time, 600 million years ago, South Australia and Western Australia had already collided in the past and were already attached together. The next piece of the puzzle would be the collision between it and a large chunk of continental crust that makes up what we in present day call Northern Western Australia, the Northern Territory and the Western part of Queensland. This entire landmass was actually already joined to Western Australia and South Australia at this point by a tiny land bridge that existed between the southeastern parts of the Northern Territory, which connected to Northern South Australia. But eventually, a series of tectonic events would see these two landmasses draw nearer and nearer to one another, until they finally collided. The result of this collision was exactly the same as what is currently happening with the Himalayan Mountains, where two large pieces of continental crust have collided and rather than subduction occurring, like what would happen if an oceanic plate and a continental plate collided, instead a large and extensive period of uplift occurred, and it did so at an incredibly quick rate in terms of geological time, forming this mountain rapidly. It was thrust up for thousands of metres along the weak point of the thinner crust beneath an ancient inland sea, building these massive Himalayan sized mountain ranges as a result. The existing geological research has broadly determined that the Peterman Ranges were equivalent in height to the Himalayas. That would mean Australia had a mountain range almost 9,000 metres above sea level. These snow-covered peaks extended for 2,000 kilometres across the land. Unfortunately, as is a recurring theme in everything existing in life, all great things must come to an end. The present-day Peterman Ranges are a mere shadow of their former glory existing in the present day as a small bulbous chain of hills with a peak present day height of 1,158 metres. Things were different when this mountain range was at its peak. The planet was a different place back then and it was thought to have existed in a desert-like climate after a series of ice ages occurred. These bare mountains eroded easily as no plants existed to reduce the rate of erosion and as a result more sediment was being lost than was being created. Huge amounts of deposits from the mountain eroded each time it rained and formed alluvial fans adjacent to the ranges. Alluvial fans are essentially what occurs when water, wind and other eroding factors break up rock and they all become deposited together in a fan-like shape. It is the remains of at least two of these alluvial fans that are seen today as Uluru and Katajuta. Water is excellent at sorting out material based on specific gravity. This is why gold miners use a gold pan and water to reduce material down, leaving only the heaviest materials behind, along with the valuable gold. And this is why Uluru and Katajuta were created from this mountain, as large amounts of material were slowly sorted by wind and rain over millions of years, leaving large accumulations of different sedimentary rock types behind where they would often exist with similar or the same rock types due to specific gravity, with heavier and lighter weathered material accumulating in its own respective areas. Lighter material would travel easier and further, and heavier material would remain closer to the source where it was eroded. 
In time, the Peterman Ranges withered down to become nothing more than the little protrusions left over today of the once mighty mountain range, spanning over a long distance in the Australian outback, which is still visible both in person and to a lesser extent on Google Earth. All that remains to be seen is the skeleton of a mountain once as large as the Himalayas, and the memory of the collision of the continents that created it. About 50 million years after the fall of the Peterman Ranges, another orogeny would occur, known as the Alice Springs Orogeny. The deep faults that were created by the collision that originally formed the Peterman Ranges would reactivate, and would once again enter a long-lived period of mountain building that lasted for 150 million years. The period of mountain building would however never reach the epic status that the Peterman Ranges did, and in present day, you can see the mountains that were created by this orogeny, which, much like the Peterman Ranges, have been highly eroded and are merely shadows of their former self. Orogenies are known for many things, but one of their best well-known traits is their ability to deposit vast mineral wealth. And in present day, these events are responsible for the rich deposits that exist in this part of Australia. There is a story known as Lassiter's Reef in Australian folklore, where a prospector apparently stumbled across an unbelievably gold-rich quartz reef. This reef has never been found, but if it did exist, it's almost certain that the formation of it was due to either one of these events, or from both of them. Maybe one day, the reef will finally be rediscovered, if it exists, and in present day, many diehard Aussie gold prospectors are still searching for it in the unforgiving Australian outback. And so, this is the story of Australia's very own Himalayan mountains, until the next big collision occurs. 500 million years ago, Uluru and Katajuta were a part of the gigantic mountain range that existed in Australia that, at its height, was as tall as the Himalayan mountains, and was called the Peterman Ranges. I covered this mountain in my last video, where I explain how it was formed, and what led to its disappearance from the land. The link to that video will be down below in the description. To understand the next part of this story, we first need to go back 900 million years ago to cover the formation of the Amadeus Basin, in which Uluru and Katajuta lie in present day. The Amadeus Basin was a shallow sea, which comprised of the sediments required to eventually merge and form the two monoliths. Some of the Amadeus Basin was, at several points in time, blocked off from this shallow sea and the water that it held eventually evaporated, leaving crusted salt behind. A cold period on Earth that followed left deposits of glacial rock. The older sediments in the Amadeus Basin were crumpled and buckled as a result of tectonic collision, when the gigantic Peterman mountain range formed 550 million years ago. At this point in time, bacteria and algae were the only life forms that existed on dry land, and they helped to break down the jagged mountain ranges, along with other erosive elements. 500 million years ago, shallow seas once again covered the region, and the Peterman mountain range had already succumbed to devastating erosion as a result of there being no plants alive on land to stabilise the soil. The alluvial fans created from the moving of eroded debris from the mountain had piled up all around the former site of the Peterman ranges. The sand that became the Arco sandstone, whose destiny was to eventually, in time, become Uluru, was increasingly and steadily dumped at the bottom of the mountain range as the mountain was eroded more and more. Katajuta, on the other hand, wasn't constructed from Arco sandstone. It was instead formed from cemented conglomerates of differing river-worn rocks, ranging from basalt, porphyry, granite, gneiss, and volcanic rock, among other minerals. All of this was worn down over time and accumulated in an alluvial fan, and eventually this would become Katajuta. The sediments that made up Katajuta were moved by a drainage channel that was carved into the Peterman Ranges over time by rain, and was deposited as an alluvial fan a little further away from where the Arco sandstone that made Uluru lay. When Australia turned into an inland sea, 
and a phase of deposition began within the Amadeus Basin. Limestone, mud, and sand were deposited, burying the Arco sandstone that would become Uluru and the rocks that would become Katajuta underneath the seas. Around 400 million years ago, the sands and gravels of Uluru and Katajuta were located so far beneath the surface of the earth that they had an enormous amount of overlying pressure above them. As a result of this, the Arco sandstone that once existed as particles of eroded sand became forcibly gelled into a cemented state. Under such intense pressure, the rocks were hardened to the point of literally being welded together. It was during this time that an event known as the Alice Springs Orogeny began to take place. This is very important because it, like the Peterman Orogeny, was another major mountain building episode in Central Australia, responsible for the formation of a series of large mountain ranges, though none would ever be as large as the Peterman Ranges were. This Orogeny raised the region above sea level, and horizontal layers of the Uluru Arcos were folded and turned nearly 90 degrees during the orogeny to their present position, giving it the very rare look it has today. Along with the folding and tilting, they were raised from their once deep position within the earth, alongside the mountain building orogeny that was taking place, raising them close to the surface, where erosion would eventually reveal them, leaving it visible in its present day spot. The Cartagena conglomerates were tilted only about 15 to 20 degrees from the horizontal plane, and the period of uplift worked to recede the shallow sea in the Amadeus Basin, as it was slowly pushed higher with each passing year. When the sea finally receded within the next 100 million years, and eventually dried up, the two monumental structures finally surfaced once more upon the surface of the Earth after a long phase of erosion that lasted hundreds of millions of years. The shape Uluru and Katajuta has, in modern days, eventually emerged from the softer rocks, and they are among the last few legacies remaining from the once glorious Peterman mountain range, that at one point in time reached as high as the Himalayas. Uluru and Katajuta are the visible tips of huge rock slabs that extend far beneath the ground. It is possible that they extend as far as 6 kilometers deep, which serves as a reminder to why they formed in the first place, as at that depth, such a large amount of pressure was generated with the weight of the seawater that once existed above them. After this, history remains relatively silent. Climates change time and time again, and two rocks went from being a part of swamps, lush plants and a wet climate 65 million years ago, to finally around 500,000 years ago becoming the dry, arid place we know today. A final fact I'd like to mention is the red colour of Uluru is due to the oxidation or the rusting of the iron-bearing minerals within the rock, as it has sat there in the desert air for hundreds of thousands of years. If you were to, however, scratch beneath the surface, the rock would be the typical silver colour that unoxidized iron exists as prior to succumbing to rust. When looking at the two geological formations, it is visually obvious that they are composed of different rock types. Uluru of Arcos and Katajuta of gravel consisting of pebbles, conglomerates and boulders cemented by sand and mud into what is known amongst geologists as a conglomerate. And so, this is the story of two amazing and significant natural landmarks existing within the harsh deserts of Australia, that once existed within the great and mighty Peterman mountain range, that stretched for over 9,000 metres in height, and which, over time, would be cut down into bulbous 800 to 1,000 metre tall stunning rocks. These rocks are very slowly eroding in present day, so take some time out of your life one day to go and visit them as someday the life forms of the future will not be able to, when it finally joins the Peterman Ranges in the dust of history.